Jen, should we podcast today? Because I'm very excited about this. I can tell you are. I think that we should. I think we should tell everybody too. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook. You can watch this podcast on the YouTube and you can listen wherever you listen to podcasts, right? Yeah, it's that easy. And then you got to rate, review, subscribe. Just say call nice your things. I don't know. Just give a compliment here and there. They sound yeah. beautiful and they, young and thin. Yeah. As my dad would say, he has a face for radio. And I'm like, <laughs> that's, dad, quit it. Uh, now I got to get, I got to get away from talking about my parents because we're going to yeah, talk shake about it one out. of shake my that favorite- energy off. Okay. Cause basically you guys, this whole episode is a hot flash. Woo. It's, it's an entire hot flash because we're going to talk about something that Jen and I are both in love with. Yeah. I might be a little bit more obsessed. I think so. I, I, I think so. I've taken it to another level, it, but that's fine. I, we're all I, coping. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. There's a lot of as I it. as I delve into it, I'll, I'll I haven't thought about it that much. I had to watch like three of the episodes last night. And I didn't even finish. I know. Okay, so if you don't know what we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, we are deep diving into Bridgerton, the cultural da-da, da-da, phenomenon, da-da, 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 with lots of banging, known as oh God, Bridgerton. So much banging. But only really episode six. But yes, the, uh, Jen started with the most important part, which is the banging. But we're gonna we're gonna actually deep dive into so much more. But also the banging, and then then we'll go to a mom 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 bag mom mom box, <laughs> mom box later. We're go into a mom box <laughs> just to even um, ourselves out. Just take an I, upper and a downer. It won't an be upper a, down. and a downer. It'll be an upper and an upper, actually. It's an upper and an upper. Are you kidding? If it was the only down part is that it ended, and I have to wait for season two. It okay. It's life changing. Okay, first of all, if you haven't seen Bridgerton, then I think you've been under a rock because right now it's something like eighty four million people have seen it. It's Netflix's biggest show, and it is superb. And if you haven't seen it and you are listening to this episode, we're gonna spoil the shit out of it. So what I would say is don't listen to this episode, but don't that let that stop you from rating, reviewing, and subscribing to our podcast. Let me also say <laughs> that while we're going to spoil it, I don't feel like at any point you won't know what's going to happen anyways. Like it's not uh Hold on. It's there was some suspense for me, but I'm the you know it's not I'm the one that saw the sixth <laughs> sense and I was hook line and sinker at the very end. I was like <gasps> It's not Inception or what was that movie that <laughs> oh, God or like Tenant where I or like Inception or any of those where I'm like, I am am I having a seizure? I can't find I did I not get the cliff notes? Yeah, it's just good old fashioned romance. Fantasy, uh, romance it's, and fun. It's like one of my favorite books uh, called The Scottish Rogue that was about like a shipping heir in Scotland. And you have me at hello, sir, his in the kilt. Boss's daughter. It's one of those. It's like. It's one of those. But, but not to underplay it because. You know, I was we. I knew we were going to talk about it today, and I was so excited. So I did a deep dive on Google. Not my first time when it comes to Bridgerton. I've I've joined many a fan group. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not embarrassed. There you go. I'm an enthusiast, if you will. Um, and I've probably watched. I'm not even going to tell you how many times I've watched it. Don't the whole it. the whole season. Yeah, don't you judge me. I'm not. Yeah. I just the whole season and the pilot one extra time. More than the rest. <laughs> and I joined a viewing party where we all watched it virtually together. <laughs> and then there was a Q&A. All right. Afterwards. I'm not going to say anything, but I do remember having a conversation with you last week where you were like, I don't have time to paint my nails. <laughs> <laughs> we all, we all have priorities. I know. I'm like, I cannot make a warm dinner to save my... I am busy. I'm busy, you guys. Why? I... I got to go memorize the second scene of Bridgerton again. Don't worry about she's, it. She's like, let me look at my Google calendar. <laughs> Monday, watch season one of Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Tuesday. Tuesday. Watch season watch one. Watch season one of Bridgerton. <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry about it. It brings me joy. And here, I was really trying to unpack it because I was like, what do I love about it so much? First of all, it's set in the what I think is the greatest genre, which is like, I think you would call it the Victorian era. It's like 1813. Mm-hmm. It's high society London. Yeah. Everybody has British accents, which I'm like on board for. Yes. And 
the thing that's cool, so it's by Sh- it's Shonda Land, so it's Shonda Rhimes who did like Grey's Anatomy. So what she did is she tipped this love story, these books that Julia Quinn wrote that are like lords and ladies, and she tipped it. Well, Chris Van Dusen, who's actually the showrunner, tipped it on its side, and he's like, "I'm gonna racially integrate this motherfucker, and it's gonna there's going to be aristocracy that's black that's gonna be mixed in every." person of color you can imagine plays all the different statuses in society and they do it with a single line they explain it in one line in the pilot and I think it's so brilliant. oh I didn't even catch it but I just oh yeah you well it's funny you should say Jen because I wrote that line down <laughs> I just, hold on that was a perfect beach ball setup okay what's the line so the 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 line is so it is oh first of all let's unpack this the Duke of Hastings is the hottest man on the planet and he is black and he is the um like aristocracy duke in London and he is but he's the one who eventually marries Daphne. I think the, yeah, I think he's is he Jamaican? His he is or French um, uh, Zimbabwean. Okay, cuz he has a he French sounding English. name. Oh, the actor. yeah, which makes don't it take me out of it. I don't want to. I don't want to think about him. As I feel human. like I, I feel like, like we're mm. jumping ahead. Can I back up one at one yes, point to say please. one thing? Okay, yes, yes because yes, yes. lords and ladies, when the opening scene comes up and you see people like walking down this like beautiful, yeah, you're like it. It is the quality of a film. Like a very yeah. well done film. Yes. Like you get five minutes in and you're like, they dropped some serious bank in making this thing because everything. Mm-hmm is perfection the makeup the, tr- the hair God. the costumes the it's like one of those of it. shows where you know it's either going to be nominated or it's going to win everything because it's the best people are and and most of the actors if not all of them are british right they're or they're well, um yes they're british and irish but mostly it's just this culmination of people that kind of don't have big names yet yeah they're just great and actors so you, but with and so it doesn't take you out of it yeah. you're just you're all into this fantastic world where in one moment they sort of rewrote history and it worked. I mean, I don't want to like, it's funny because I I feel like it's really cool to see this like different world where everybody's racially integrated, but I also don't want it to be like this token thing that like we have to sort of pat ourselves on the back for it. Sean is a motherfucker. She's like been around the block. She's like, this is what we're going to do. And it worked because she's a genius. And guess what? We're all totally cool with it. Well, yeah. It's and it's awesome. It sort of just looks like the universe as it probably should have always been. Yeah. Kind of. It's that, like, it's, there's no like, I mean, there's, it's classes. There's it's like feudalism. Yes, classes. It's, oh. Yeah. Do you know how I'm not able to sleep some nights because I have back pain? Mm-hmm. Because I'm like really pushing a lot of steel in my workouts. Well, Helix <laughs> Sleep is here to help you. And you deserve a good night's sleep. So give yourself an upgrade and go check out Helix Sleep. They have this great quiz on their site. It takes like two minutes to do it. It matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress. We buy everything online nowadays. So why not buy your mattress instead of going into one of those real creepy stores, especially during the pandemic? The last thing I need is to lay down on a dirty floor sample mattress. After I took the quiz, I was matched with the Dusk mattress, which is kind of bouncy but still firm, so I get all the back support I need. Which is like me. So if you're looking to swap out your mattress for something better, head over to Helix Sleep. They have free shipping right to your door. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but we know you will. Just go to helixsleep.com slash mom, take their sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized bed that will give you the best sleep of your life. Trust me. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for all of our listeners at helixsleep.com slash mom. Kristen, you yes. have content to push out and a story to share. Am I right? Yo, always. Okay, remove the complexity with issue. They make content look amazing wherever you post and exactly how you envisioned it. Issue is an all-in-one platform to create and distribute your digital publications, including social media like Instagram and Facebook, and they can even help you make animated Instagram stories. You can start using Issue for free, but they also offer premium features that give you a more customized experience. Get started with Issue today for free. Or if you sign up for a premium account, you'll get 50% off when you go to issuu.com slash podcast and use promo code 
M O M. That's I S S U U dot com slash podcast and use promo code MOM at checkout for your free account or 50% off your premium account. That's issue dot com slash podcast with promo code MOM. That's issue dot com slash podcast with promo code MOM. Okay, so now let's get back to how hot. Okay, is yeah. it Rege so, or Re- yeah, the actor? We, how we, do you say his name? I've been dating Bridgerton. And now we've done it. We have, we've gone the, we've gone all the way, Bridgerton and I. So the, the hot guy in it, like the number yeah. one hot guy. The Duke of Hastings. Refer to him as the, the Duke, Duke of Hastings. Of Hastings. So Simon. I can pretend I'm there. That's why I'm wearing a dress. Simon, my Lord. Yes. I know Chris, I saw Kristen wearing a dress like when we started doing the podcast on the Zoom and I was like, did what somebody die? What, you don't get, <laughs> what is going on? I hate you. <laughs> No, it's pretty. I love it. So I he is, felt like I wanted to p- play the part. That's what I love about it so much. So a lot of times with the casting on those like romantic period pieces are like, you know, like you're, you're super Nordic, like Northern European men that you're supposed to find hot look very much like Brad Pitt interview with a vampire style though. Like a little rosacea. Yeah, but they all pale. look the same. Yeah, like they all look the same. Sort of orangish kind of hair. And you're like, okay, I get it. that was hot back then when people didn't shower. But yeah. This this actor this is different. Is, like he looks well, like he'd be in GQ or something. I think he's gonna be the next James Bond. But again, can we refer to him? I don't I want to pretend he's, that we are literally doing oh. a podcast Inside of Bridgerton, oh, okay. they're outside at a party, and we have been invited. And once we are done here, we're going to go sip champagne with oh, them. Real life. Okay. That is the world I'm living Kristen, in. Listen, I am wearing workout pants and sneakers, though. It doesn't I wish matter. Would have. I'm wearing sneakers. I'm wearing a dress, but I'm not going to go <laughs> crazy about it. Okay. So, okay. So Bridgerton. So here's so obviously it's a phenomenon because everybody's watching it and everybody's having this great time. And I wonder if everybody sort of feels the way I do, which is when I started watching it, I was like, this is special. Like I'm not watching TV. Like I'm watching Dateline and I'm like, Oh man, I do like a good murder show, but there's something to this that felt like, I don't want to binge it. I want to like every, I want to like wait once a w- night to watch one episode. I'm going to like, I want to Google a little bit. I want to like, sit in my comfies and my cute pajamas not my ratty ones that have a hole in the butt and I want to like like dive in and be girly and feminine in it and then oh man I was watching it and then episode six hit the corner and I was like oh 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 what well, and I owed for like a good four minutes unassisted <laughs> there's in the very first like scene before the opening credits there's a little bit of naughty like happening oh do you mean this one that I happen to have on my phone Jen because we share the same brain really I I I was just shocked I looked at my husband I was like listen I don't get any ideas I did not shower for many days that's always neither did they that's the turn on I'm like my husband could be a you know (laughs) pulling the carriage and he comes around and he's a farm boy and I'm a princess I'm a princess in London they don't know me but it's funny because this is the scene now listen tell me if you can hear this from my phone this is the scene I was like what's up Bridgerton I'm all in okay Duke of Hastings and Daphne promenading as they call it through the park and then he says this I would truly court in you I would not need flowers okay five minutes alone with you in the drawing room if I were courting you, I would not need flowers. I would only need five minutes alone with you in the drawing room. <laughs> and then he proves it multiple times later on in the so season. It's many times. Yeah. But in the first episode, there, like in the park, there's two people. There's some bare butts doing it. In the- oh, yeah. That's Anthony, the the oldest brother, which is what season two will follow. That's a prediction, not a, and I'm not sure, but uh, all the fan the fan fiction that I'm reading. So I even looked up. Uh, so Daphne is the daughter of um, a viscount, which I had to look up. Right, it's like above an earl and below a duke. Look at you, yeah, a viscount. That's yeah. what Anthony is. Yes, because they're the he is now viscount because his dad has died. 
you yes. know, and so it's this mom who's really awesome. Like I, she's awesome. She's a great character, and she has eight kids, and it is so like real to life because she's like forty two probably, and she's got like yeah. a twenty five year old down to like babies basically. Yep. So, yep. um, and then her husband died, and they were like really in love. And you guys, there's so much. Kristen's gonna roll her eyes. She's gonna absolutely no. lose her no. lady boner. I'm not. But there's so much like that is going on now that like screams like oh that's where that started from culturally where it's I like I agree the, that's why I think this show's so great I think it unravels conversations exactly like this I could not be more on board so it's like the the women they literally have no choice in who they're getting married to and their moms like force it upon them except our what's her name I gotta look is it Benedict it's, well, no it's, it's um... <laughs> the mom's not Benedict Jen come on <laughs> It's Bridgerton, shocker. It's Lady Bridgerton. Yeah. And she's the, she's the mom. I think it's Violet. Violet, yeah. So she fell in love with her husband. She, like, really loved her husband. So she really wants her kids to, like, be in love. But everybody else is just, like... They match because of your dowry. He's got enough and your, money. Yeah, and, like, they didn't care how old he was. They didn't care. Like, and all I think, keep thinking is, like... like you, everybody thinks the same thing about arranged marriages. They're like, do I have to have sex with a guy I don't know? They're like, you, you want me to be pure. That's super important before the old big day and big wedding night. But you want me to like, just act like I'm this like sex vixen with this like super stranger who has 20 years on me. Like then and now, like, I think it's the, but I think they address it in this. I think they show you how desperate a young woman is. If she is considered tarnished, yes. if it's, she's going to wear the scarlet letter. She's like, Hey bro, you just kissed me in the garden and Snoopy McSnooperson saw it. And now you, I don't want to be slut shamed. You got to yeah. marry me. No, literally it happens to be super hot. It's not a terrible situation. If they're even tarnished, talking to somebody and there's not a chaperone present they're considered like damaged goods and it like brings shame on their whole family which we're always like man can you believe they stoned people in the middle east well they did it here and it was yeah. not even that long ago and evidently women, and if you were like anything different you were a witch or you were a whore or these things and i think they they really dive into that and i think what's neat is even in the love making scenes, I mean, this is what everybody's talking about is how little women knew about what was expected That's of them. That's what I talked to my husband about this because it's wonderful. It, it was like, so the women, their moms didn't tell them even how babies were made. So you have this like woman who's like 17 or 18 yeah. getting married. And then like one of them, she, they were like marrying her off to this like old 50 year old dude. Yeah. Can you imagine your wedding night not knowing what, what sex? I mean, you're essentially raped on your wedding night is what happens yeah. unless you are a uh, Phoebe. Wait, what's her name? Yeah. Is it? Well, the, Phoebe's the actress is okay. named Daphne. See, but that's what I think what they're doing is I think this is another thing that's so brilliant about the show. They've taken these things that we know are terrible, right? And they've turned them on their side and they've really given it that like the the fancy preppy words are female gaze. I mean, Bridgerton does a great job of making you feel sexy, feel but sexy. I am laying in bed watching it. Sometimes my husband's asleep snoring. My dog has one of those like rubber basket masks on his face because he's dangerous. I am cutting my hangnail toes because I haven't had a pedicure since... 2019 and like <sighs> it's just hard to feel sexy but it does get you away it really it, does it does it takes me it's fantasy it's escapism they take these um social norms and twist them and so like all of a sudden these different avenues in my fantasy brain are like opening up I'm like what's up I didn't know I had a thing for that but now I have a thing for that so imagine it being 1813 mm. and remember that like I'm dead because I'm so old if that's oh the case, gosh. but go ahead. Okay, so yeah, we, we died of typhoid or something like that, <laughs> like in our 30s. So, yeah. okay, so imagine that like the love and the attraction that you felt when you were like 18 years old, where you like, it hurts your teeth. You like, you yeah. just vibrate you're like, when My you're around. My pants are swollen. Absolutely. So it's those two and like, it's these two are like that. These two main characters, Daphne and the Duke of Hastings, which Daphne is and Simon, the Duke, yes, and our, Simon, our friends. And there, there is a lot of so much attraction. tension, and tension. they're trying to do the right thing, and then, Ugh. but you guys, 
this is a dude that loves to get down. And by get down, I mean, I mean, please a woman. Woman. And this is 1813. Like, I don't even know that in like 1985, that was a strong man (laughs) game. I mean, maybe. That's what I. Maybe. So it certain Jen men might, Jen might be referring to a, a, a here I'm going to take my lady boner all the all the way away because I'm going to tell you I told my mom we were going to be talking about Bridgerton today. <laughs> oh there and goes. Terry Boop. and Terry goes <laughs> My lady boner goes it's back and, back up inside. <laughs> boop 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 and Terry goes, "Oh, I've never I've never loved a staircase more." And I'm like what? Ew! No, no, my dearie. Well, that scene was hot. I gotta tell you, we, I live vicariously as a seventy-year-old woman. I just watched that thing, and I go, Terry, I gotta go. I, you know, this is gross. Look, I can't. This but is I, why Terry's been married. I mean, how they've been married? What fifty years? Forty-five, yeah, forty-eight, 48 years. years, whatever. Just recently, their anniversary, and like all I could think of. There's this wonderful. Uh, it, it, Love making. I hate that word. There's this. Why are you doing? This I don't to know. Me? There's what just this wonderful staircase scene, and like, oh, she's yeah, on an he, upper stair, and he's on the lower stair. Let, and let's like, just say her head's hitting stair number eight, and his head is hitting stair number four. Yes, exactly. So it's a, it's yeah. not an exact baby making situation. It's just more of a fun I'm making. Like you longer. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with your shit tomorrow a little bit easier. And so. All I could think of <laughs> when watching this, and it, I, it was, it's very hot. Like I literally, and I haven't oh, watched boy. something like this in a long time, where I'm like <laughs> looking at my husband, I know, like kind of like, blushing, and nobody else is really. Like, like, I don't want anybody to walk in. You know, I'm so embarrassed. He was playing like poker on his phone or something. <laughs> he's not even really playing. So I'm like embarrassed by it, but then I was like. On your steps, like somebody could walk in. I was so scared that, like, what about when they were in the in the in the um park at the at the castle? No, no, no. That's the people working there. That's his land. That's his. So what? That's they. They're expected to. Can you? But it did get me thinking. Can you imagine what people who worked in castles used to see? See, I mean, if it was that, I'd work there now. And I would. I'd just be the creeper on the lawn. Like I got lawn duty. You know I love Stitch Fix. I know. I'm going to talk about it right now because it helps a girl like me who doesn't like to shop. If your go-to outfit in 2020 has become sweatshirts or yoga pants, that's me, you may be feeling like your style is in a rut. Also me. So let Stitch Fix help you feel excited about what you're wearing. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit, and it's an easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy. Keep what you love and return what you don't. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns, and exchanges with prepaid return envelope included. No subscription required. Those magic words, huh? Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just $20 a styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards the pieces you keep. No hidden fees. Yay. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash imomsohard and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash imomsohard for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash imomsohard. Jen, I can't wait for you to talk about your favorite subject, athletic greens. Am I talking about it too much? I just like it. You love it. That's fine. It's, you but know what? You should tell everybody why you take well, it. Well, because it's hard to find a green drink. And if you don't know what a green drink is, and I didn't until I was trying to get healthy and like get all my vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and all that stuff. But sometimes they just taste disgusting and athletic greens is really good. You can have it in the morning before your coffee, get all your self-care done like out of the way and, and start your day. And there's so many stressors in life right now. It's difficult to maintain your effective nutritional habits, give your body the nutrients it needs to thrive, busy schedules, poor sleep, or simply not eating enough of the right food. And that's why we like Athletic Greens. That's right. Athletic Greens is lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, and contains less than one gram of sugar without compromising on taste. One scoop of Athletic Greens contains 75 vitamins, minerals, including probiotics, a green superfood blend, and more. Then that all works together to increase your energy and your focus. It aids with digestion and support and healthy, and it supports a healthy immune system. 
Athletic Greens is doubling down on supporting your immune system during the winter months. They're offering our audience a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash imomsohard. That's athleticgreens.com slash imomsohard and get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs today with your first purchase. Okay, I'm confused. I have to ask something. So okay, there's sure. there's all these things like there's there's beautiful love stories. Like, wait, who's your yep. favorite character? Just who did you like relate to the most? You know, who do you think? Uh, obviously, I love the love story because I like the way it makes me feel. I love this question so much. But I actually really gravitated towards Eloise, which makes perfect sense because she's a little bit tomboy. The and sister? She, like, yeah, she resists oh, the, the sort of norm. She has the really good friend in Penelope. Yeah. She's like ambitious to find out who we haven't even talked about who is mrs whistledown and we've which by the way can i just tell you before we continue this podcast jen just told me today that she has not watched the last 10 minutes of freaking bridgerton so i'm not going to tell you what's in it okay but you are missing two of the most major reveals and i cannot believe that you had to, to I blew it, you guys. I fell asleep, but I had to watch three last night to get caught up. I only thought I had one to watch. I was a, a hero, and I made it. <laughs> I watched the whole season again today and told the kids I was working on a school project. I made it through 2.8 and and fell asleep, And but I felt like I would gotten most of it, but evidently nope, I missed some nope, seven. Nope. I do know who the actress is that plays that, so I, I can't figure out how she's related, but I'll I'll watch it. Well, tonight. Eloise is my favorite. I, she's my favorite sort of undiscovered character right now. But my favorite storyline is actually Anthony's and Benedict's. I think those are very cool. But I mm, there's so many parts in, the, so much in the show that I love. I love. Okay, that's. Lady. Can I, who, can I tell yours? you yeah. who my favorite is? Yes, the, yes, yes. The queen. Of course. She's so. The, her outfits. Face. Her everything. Like her hair. It's like a. It's, yeah. Uh, you they t- they take this modern flair. Look, I can't speak. I'm talking about her hair, and I it's literally like because Marie these Antoinette, wigs are like modernized works of yeah. art. They are works of art. They're so weird. They're so grand. They're so bizarre. And there's something so you know. I always say this about like Dolly Parton. There ain't a lady that's had more work done than Dolly Parton. But there's no one that you feel like you could eat fried chicken in front of more than Dolly Parton. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. I've got a real thing about eating wings in front of people because I she gets I'm, in there. I'm, I get in there. I'm aggressive. I sort of collect the bones for a winter's day, but I, I, there's nothing left on the bone. It's embarrassing. I, if I really know you, I'll eat wings in front of you. And if I don't, I won't. I feel like Dolly Parton, I could sit down and eat wings in front of, I feel like that queen, her gravitas as an actress and as a queen, I feel like she's so, she's so over the top yet. She's so freaking like a down chick. It's awesome. Yeah. This is, this is where, um, I, loved it and I think this is like such incredible writing is she seems like she is cold business by the book like you can't even kind of figure out what her intentions are Uh -uh. and then there is one scene in the entire show that you find out her motivation and it is benevolent and sad And, and it's like it, there's a lot of characters like that where they're really yeah. desperately trying to do the right thing and they're like super flawed. It's like, yeah. it's just such good writing. They're all such, they're all such textured characters. That's because it's like Shondaland and Chris Van Dusen yeah. is like an excellent writer. And he's like, the the only way you can really love a character is to get all of the nuance of a character. And that's why we love books. And Julia Quinn wrote like 15 books on this. It's like eight or something. I just downloaded them. Don't worry about it. But, (laughs) um, but it's so fun because you get to fall in love with their good and bad side. And it's all that fun stuff. You know, that it's that push pull of like, I shouldn't love you, but I do. Or like stolen moments. I, 100 another prediction I'm going to make is I think they're going to have a love story for the mom I think they're going to have a love story for that's her great. and they should yes. because that's another thing we don't see enough of is like women over 40 getting a real love story and god forbid women over 50 getting a real love story both of those actresses are like 56 57 yeah and I think they are fantastic I do think there's this great um and and everybody has this exact same conflict it, it's not their main uh, struggle throughout the series, but everyone is torn between duty and love. And we're talking yes. about mothers trying to do the best thing for their 
kids. Yeah. And then um, people who, like, I love the older, the older brother is probably, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. three of the brothers. I'd be like, I'd make some poor choices. I don't know that one. I really like that one because he's the nicest, but he looks a little dopey to me. I don't know. I don't. But I like the one that's the biggest dick. Me too. Oh, Kristen, I'll fight you for him. I love him <laughs> so much. And he's like dirty and he's just like loves he's this so chick dirty. who he should not love. And when she like puts him together at that in the last episode, I was like. And she's got the, the, the eyes full of tears. Yep. And, he, and I'm like, I got like... Me too. I didn't know if I should cry or masturbate, so I think I did both at the same time. Yeah, that's totally... And, and I've done that more on Bridgerton <laughs> than... You guys, I'm coming back in. I'm, I thought the I thought the flicker in the lights was gone, but it turns out I just needed Bridgerton that's to turn right. it on. This old, I'm like, old gal still got it. You guys. I'm like, Ooh, okay, what am I doing? Pulling the shoulder? I am back? not worried about you. If Terry is that into Bridgerton, <laughs> you've got many years of... <laughs> Terry's so like, oh, she, and the thing is, I love her because she is so open, but I also am like, good God, I was just in the middle of taking a bite of bagel. Like, I didn't know, ugh, I didn't know that was, she's funny, Game of Thrones, she's like, I, I printed out a schematic so I could follow the storylines. That's and really smart, like, actually. I, she <sighs> doesn't mess around, that woman, when it comes to, and something like Bridgerton, which She's so fun to talk about with it, but she, cause she doesn't have the Hollywood. She, you know, she's just a viewer. Not that that's, that sounds like I'm like, oh, I'm so cool. Cause I'm Hollywood, but she just takes it at face value. So like whenever something is critically acclaimed and I'm kind of the same way, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I care about that. I just want to have a good time when I'm watching well, it. And I, I, Bridgerton just crosses, I, checks all the boxes, I do, baby. I think I was explaining this to my son actually this week where when something is written really well, like you don't have these uh, like trip ups and storyline where things are consistent. Yeah. There's like yeah. no uh, simple anachronisms and things like that. You're, I'll look at that up later. <laughs> like things that don't fit. Like, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Um, but w- when it's seamless like that, it's so easy to maintain your suspension of disbelief that it's like totally. happening and that it's a real story and that you're really invested in these people. Yeah. And and I think that's why it's such a nice escape for right now where we're all at in the world. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, no masks. No. F- like, yeah, sure. There's a plague, but it's not my problem. You guys, six you know? months ago, we were masturbating to the li- the Tiger King because yeah. there was nothing else new on TV. There was TV. nothing else. And that did never felt right. That's, but like this is this is a whole different I'm so grateful. Here's yes, the thing. I think good. you're right. We nobody saw this coming. We did not I'm expect there to be something so this good this late into quarantine. Grateful. I'm oh so yeah. grateful for Bridgerton because I feel like I have conversation that isn't about all the crap going on in the world. It's yep. not about politics. It's it's d- robust conversation. It's like fun to talk about all the different characters. And I have to tell you, I agree with you about what you said to Dashiell because my husband thinks I'm like super particular and I am because I have these weird hangups, but uh, w- w- which is also diagnosed as attention deficit disorder. <laughs> so, um, I've uh, gotten contact ADD. Yeah, I have yeah. CADD. Yeah, you have you have it for me. <laughs> and I will go to a movie and if somebody has on a weird wig, I sort of can't stop yeah. looking at it and I'm out. If I feel like somebody went and rented a bunch of costumes and walked on a street and called it a period yeah. of peace, I'm out. Like if I'm not if it's not fully immersed in the world, if that is not the case, yeah. I I'll catch it and I can't. And with Bridgerton, I kept going like not only just because of like the the racial integration and the all that jazz, which was so awesome, I also was like, "Whoa, the hair looks different," but I'm into it. Oh wait, look at how these pieces are like elevated forms of things I've seen before, like in Pride yeah. and Prejudice, but it looks different, and I dig it. Like they really did dot all the I's and cross all the T's. It's so beautiful. Yeah, this, the stuff that's maybe off, like like the queen's hair. Like I just said, it looks like a modernized Marie Antoinette. I don't know that that wasn't the hair because it's not like they're, it's not crimped with pink or something in it. Like, you know, it's, well, it's, yeah, there's like one with these like little balls that go up really high and one looks like rope. Yeah. And it like, it's just, it's art. Yeah. And I think that like the way they, they dress, oh my God, 
like they just need to start putting those shirts in the mall God, because there's just so that, many boobs happening boobs, too. And also not only boobs, but the the open shirt that Simon the Duke of Hastings wears, where it's just like drafty and open oh, and linen-y. He wears you guys, a lot oh, of times he God. wears these shirts and what they communicate <laughs> is I'm gonna ride a horse for a while and then I'm gonna go under a tree and I'm gonna write poetry. <laughs> And then I'm going to bang a maiden. Bang the yeah. shit out of you. Yeah. Yeah. So he it's- is. He's down to pound in the best way. <laughs> can, I, can I be more romantic about it? I just want to know. Uh, I also thought, and by the way, right in our section, what? Um, it was crazy to me. Like, they really did explore, like, what sex looks like when... Good God, now I'm all thinking that my kid's going to come in. Like when he when he didn't want to go all the way. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't. And like you never see that. And you never see the, it's the set. man doing most of the work, which is it it, it should be him yeah, trying you guys, to please. Here's another part of it. Here's a great reason for women to enjoy it. The women are like totally normal looking. They're like, there's no like, you you know, you watch like. Oh, I think the lead is so no, she's beautiful. She she almost aired a little young for me in the beginning. I was like, oof. I do think she looks a little young, but you're not like, uh, well, that guy would agree, never though. go for me because she doesn't look like a, a supermodel. She just looks like right. A, she's just very pretty. Yeah. But I agree with you with like everybody has normal faces. They don't look like they're being injected with a bunch of stuff. Like there's like the women are aging in a beautiful way. Like it is very like it's just delightful to see. The sex isn't gratuitous. It literally like is a part of the story. So like there's no like, oh, we're just going to have her in boobs only like gyrating or something. There's none of that. It's like it's him. Kristen was referring to there is a. The coitus interruptus, as it's called <laughs> professionally. Uh, and if you know what that is, then. Um, yeah, it's called your kid. <laughs> not not in the show. Not a, it's not to in prevent the show. kids. They need like an eight year old. Yeah. They'll never bone again. <laughs> there's they that. Like- but there's also where she does not know what sex Anything. is at all. And. This guy, this is why it's so steamy. This guy that she is like so attracted to, like has the sexual he tension have with. An air. He says to her, "Learn your body, explore your body." <gasps> Basically, he teach, yeah. which I think is super hot for a. It's so hot and confident I was for a man. Like to a fourteen-year-old running around our house, I was like, "Oh my god, can they see that I, I'm watching this outside? I better close the curtains." Um, can I get where? Who? What am I doing? Ooh, oh, yeah, okay, and I was like a dork I was I guys I've done I've done that before you know, it wasn't, <laughs> but for some reason I was like maybe I'm doing it wrong <laughs> I know it like, does make you blush in like the very best ways and you know partly I don't care because I guarantee you my neighbors are watching some weird like yeah they're watching weird porn yeah and we're you know there's like they, an orangutan tied to a, <laughs> a boat and there's a guy with I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they'll hear your Bridgerton song and they're da 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 da. It's garbage. And I'll be like, listen, uh, I don't watch this kind of stuff that much. I need to. I have a very fun game for you. First of all, did you know that the voiceover of Bridgerton is Julie Andrews? Interesting. I thought it. Well, okay, that makes sense. Okay. I did think at one point it was the queen, though, because I think they sound very similar. They do sound. She is. Yeah. They. Well, yeah, she's they sound similar. They have like a nice um, like age to their voices mm-hmm. that I think is really yeah. cool. And then all the Taylor Swift songs that are the undertow is all, you know, played, and you know that Jenny laid on a heart. We're having e. a <laughs> we're having a whole Facebook messenger thing about <laughs> Taylor Swift right now because we're like. We just need to talk about our feelings, man. Like, we would be front and center at a T-Swift concert. Oh, yeah. Be like, are you guys somebody's moms? And I'm like, yeah, but we did not bring them. We could be Taylor Swift's mom, actually. And no, we're- we could not, you liar. <laughs> talk about yourself, you bag. <laughs> Jesus, I'm younger than you. <laughs> I know, but I'm not ta- out me for being... Taylor Swift's mom. I'm talking about Bridgerton. I'm trying to like dive into my sexy. Well, self I don't know how sucker. old Taylor Swift is. She looks eleven. She's like thirty-two. 
Oh, I didn't know that. Is she? Well, God. All right, let's change the subject. If it were 1813, I could absolutely be Taylor Swift. If mom. it were 1813, I told you I'd be like six feet under, and you know that I wouldn't be royalty. I'd be working on a farm because that's just how it's going to go for me. Um, I have a really fun game. Okay. This is the what is your Bridgerton name Ooh. game? Okay. So do you have a pen? Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to have you write this down because okay. she kind of talks fast, but I think I have it memorized because I've seen it <laughs> this 50 times. For your Bridgerton name, you need Lord or Lady. Okay, your Bridgerton name is you need Lord or Lady. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Brides underscore at underscore Waterfields on TikTok because this is hers and I just think it's important not to steal. Okay. Okay. Lord or Lady. Your middle name. Your middle name. Your middle name. The last drink that you drank. Add add ton at the end. Add ton at the end. Of. And then of. Okay. And then the first part of your street name, and then add Shire. First part of your street name. <laughs> Hers is gonna be awesome. And then, uh, uh, t- wait, and then Shire. So just the first syllable of your name. Okay, mine is Lady Christine Pino Grigiotin of Borshire. <laughs> I am Lady Christine Pino <laughs> Grigiotin of Borshire. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the last. I-, I have, oops, I have two drinks in front of me. So, this is the one I literally just took a sip of because I've had it here. My name is Lady Kristen Margaret Root Beer of Farm Squire, Farmshire. <laughs> Wait, I did it wrong. Let me do it again. Kristen Margaret Root Beerton of Farmshire. That's amazing. And last time it was Kristen Margaret Starbucks Latteton of Farmshire. <laughs> but I think yours is better with Pinot Grigio. So that is your official Done. Bridgerton name. I'm getting it tattooed. That's amazing. That's a good one. No, it's Mike, okay. Can I, do you have another game? Because I want to talk to you about another character in there. Um, I don't have another game, but I have another thing to show you, but we'll do it after you. <laughs> okay. I'm obsessed. I, you guys, I'm going to need like a Bridgerton, like we're going to just have to call this podcast Bridgerton for I like know. eight times. But let's, let's also add in the Featherington family <gasps> because yes. the two, the two sisters that were like literally from like Cinderella or whatever. I, I know they don't, I like cheese. I love them. Like I love them so much. And actually I freaking love their dresses so much. They were meant they're to be so, like ugly they're dresses. They're kind of you. They, oh God. Wait, who, they're well, a little bit gross. ugly. No, that one with the like giant, like, um, it's gorgeous. The one with the giant, um, what do you call that statement collar that she's oh, wearing? God, they're meant and, to have like bad taste or something, but it, I love their stuff. It looks like Gucci. I know. I know. It looks like, um, what, uh, somebody was wearing at like the inauguration. Somebody's wearing some big, and it looked very Bridgerton-esque, but I love them. But that, that sister, Penelope. Yes. Is a, she's awesome. She's awesome, but I got really mad at her. Why? Because I think, because she blew it. She. What do you mean? Penelope is, she's the one that always wore yellow, right? Because her mother made sister. her wear yellow, okay. Jen. But I know she was in love, but she really was double-crossed that girl. Jen, she liked Colin first, and then Colin didn't Marina, like her. But Marina was going to manipulate him into getting married. But he loved and her was, anyways. He did, but I still think that was shady on her part. I know she was playing a game, but I I felt bad for Penelope because I felt like she truly loved him. And then um, someone came in and tried to steal her man, even though he wasn't her man. I know. I still I love her so much. I, the characters are complex. She was great until she did that. I I loved her. She was like my favorite until she did that. And then I was like, Ugh. you need to watch the last 10 minutes and I'm not going to tell you nothing. Okay. 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 It's going to change things, baby. Okay. <laughs> that was the other thing, like that Marina character who I feel like people aren't talking about enough because everybody has 
that's you know she's not considered like one of the lead leads so she's just she was sort of a cog in the wheel and I don't know that she'll go on to season two but what a wonderful character oh, she I was I loved her I thought she was wonderful she like gave it to um uh, Mrs. Featherington like you you know you live here in this society and you have no idea what someone like me endures and like it's awesome and they oh my god they call <laughs> your period courses and they like look on your sheets to see if you've had your period like, that's what so kind of weird shit? I guess so it's so weird because it feels like there's this notion that as a woman that you would be if you were not guarded by a man you would be so out of your depths that you would just trip and fall on a wiener that you would just not have any kind of idea to be like you would be so like gosh now that I, I don't have a chaperone I just want my vagina to be out for everybody even That's though I, I that, don't know what that means basically like they were so left in the yeah dark. they were like I don't know what anything about sex means because nobody will talk to me openly but everyone assumes that the second I don't have a chaperone I'm gonna be like ready to pound well, the, like the, they're essentially livestock they're like traded for money they're like you know like it's crazy how they're treated it's so ridiculous like marina is literally traded for a gambling to, debt to pay off yeah and like to be with a man who's like that old man i was like she shouldn't have to lay with him it's crazy to me but and that shit happened all the time it still kind of happens sometimes well, I think and, like yeah you know I and I actually I think like you know everybody it's a funny thing as a mom because you're kind of like I want to know someday that my you have it in your head I want my kids to get married and have a family like it's just because that's like the normal course but like I didn't come out of college and get married and start a family I had a good decade and a half of like coming out to LA and living my own life. And those are some of my favorite memories. And I made so many mistakes and I would not have done well if I would have been like, well, I have this boyfriend in college and now I should marry him and start a family. And I should be on this very strict path because my family's telling me to, or society's telling me to, I just think that's like, it's a hard thing to fight today. I think it was hard. I definitely felt different than my friends leaving LA, leaving Nebraska, Nebraska, not sort of hunkering down with somebody. Well, I think and it's, my mom was like, she's a lesbian for I sure. I know mine too, but it's like you, it's great to have that Liberty to, it to decide that you're not, because I think I would have been, I remember desperately wanting to be a mom when I was younger and I wouldn't have been as good not that I'm great now, but I think I would have been like, hey, I'm going to leave the kids in the car while I go into Walmart. Like, I think I would have been that dumb. I don't trust myself, you know? I knew I was not ready. I knew it. It freaked me out. I was like, I, like I'm like i good with kids, and I knew I had a good maternal instinct. I knew that, but I had so many things I wanted to do before then. And I knew that like if I had kids, like I'd be like, oh, right, you can't go do an improv show at 11 at night. And then have a couple cocktails because you've got these kids at home. What? Like that does not feel, that did not feel like in the cards for me yeah. to like go, you know, I just wanted to do other things and that's fine. But I do think there's still like a little bit of pressure for women to be a certain way. It feels like, you know, oh, I, I, I don't one, know. The duplicity of it is obnoxious. They're 1000%. I still think that it's that way. And it's also hard to like, believe that we're still fighting some of this this uh, like you know the first uh the first ever um official in a, a super bowl oh, yeah first female the nfl yeah i'm like wait was it it's super bowl 55 and yeah we should have had this a long we time are ago. more than half the population like it is almost impossible that we're still fighting that that it's i don't know I don't know. I don't know. I hope like I hope with every conversation like this, it changes a little bit because I think some of it is I think some of it is also like like uh, and I'm totally killing my lady boner making it like, heavy handed. <laughs> I, I really want to get it's back. It's not to heavy handed. Heavy. It's what it makes you. God, a good show makes you think. About right? all the different yeah. things. Yeah. And I just want to say like I do think Bridgerton the thing that's really cool is it does feel like there's an uh 
a strength to the female characters. There is a power of decision. Like even though they're put into this time and to this era where they know that like being in a garden with a man without a chaperone and being seen will scar them. She's still like, hey, you got to marry me, sucker. I know what's coming and you can't do this to my family. Like it's her decision ultimately. And yeah. it is kind of cool that she like, uh, she kind of runs it. Like even though she is, quote unquote like uneducated she gets educated she like learns how to like you know I mean let me put it to you this way if somebody said you have to marry the Duke of Hastings and um you know you gotta you gotta do a good okay. job Sounds I would watch every tutorial that was available to me now I know that that's not available at that time no. but I would I would I would put in the time and the effort. It she I would literally earn a master's like degree. goes down to the um, maids' quarters to ask. Yeah, and she's like, "Don't just like cut the shit, lady. Yeah, don't tell be me polite. What's up. Like, tell yeah. me in no uncertain terms what I'm supposed to be looking for here." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like that really awesome scene during Game of Thrones when Khaleesi is like, "How do you please a man?" And then they do that like scene together, and then he, Khal Drago comes in, and then oh my gosh. they're the star in the moons and. <laughs> You can just find that scene on YouTube. You don't yeah. even have to watch them. Look it up. It's great. Look it up. It's, it's one delightful. of the only really well lit scenes in that whole show, which is nice. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, Makes me feel weird talking about, when it, you know. Whenever I watch something like Bridgerton, I am a, like, you know how I always say like, I'm really not good at like board games or like card games because I don't strategize very well. I kind of like... Like, oh, look at how pretty these cards are and the drinks. There's mint in this. And like everybody else is like, I'm here She's to like, win. Can I be the car? Can I be the car? Yeah. <laughs> I'm amazed by how much since like the literally the fucking dawn of time, men have strategized to keep their place and to like, because if you're like Ain't that the truth. this 55 year old gross dude. And I don't mean gross physically too, just just a disgusting human. And you just get to pluck some 20 year old because it, it, like it's not unrealistic to how it is now. And so I'm like, yeah, things are still kind of lo- lined up in those guys favor. You know, like they've got yeah. it so dialed in for a thousand yeah. years that it's still in their favor. Yeah, we're unpacking stuff. You know, everybody's got to I think that um, women. I got to get better at board games. No, you're, you've got, listen, if you do board games, then you're not going to online shop and then yeah, literally the economy will fall <laughs> and we need you. I'm we need you, Jen. This three legged well, table. I feel like we could, we could keep talking about Bridgerton all day and all night. I can hear my kids in the background, which is a real buzzkill as per usual. Um, but do you think we should go to the mom box? Do you I think absolutely. we're ready? I think the oh, only God, way to Jen. get my brain off of the the stairway scene but i also i really like the there's a couple of rain scenes that i appreciate that's the one i liked that's and nice. then she he's like when he says i burn for you i was like then i go to my husband and i'm like how come you never say you burn for me and he's like what and he's like on you know going to the bathroom looking at his sports apps i'm like can you yeah god turn on the fan I go. I'm good. Don't bug me during Bridgerton. Bug me after. You got a four minute window. I tell you what. If a if a TV show gets me really excited by a man pulling off a woman's long gloves, it has done its job. Um. Hello. I've never wanted to wear long gloves. I find them sort of upsetting. I've worn them as a bridesmaid, but I will wear them I just for the chance that Amazon someone will take them just off. Say, if somebody want to peel them off real slow? You know, I'm a I'm a t-shirt, jeans kind of gal, <laughs> but I will wear a long glove <laughs> in the simple chance. Kristen's got a new you- tell. She's wearing like one of those snuggly <laughs> robes, but she's got those uh, those elbow length gloves on. So her husband's like, all right, okay. No, yeah, have you met my husband? He's Irish and he gets, he's a taskmaster. So he's going to come over from the elbow and like yank him off. <laughs> and he's going to be like, it's like 82 degrees out. Why are you wearing gloves? Hold on. Let Never me get mind. <laughs> this is my Irish accent. Never Hold mind. on. <laughs> That's my Irish accent. <laughs> <laughs> that was like Klingon. <laughs> Anyways, he's like going to get stains out of him. He's not going to peel him off. He's, he's like, like, what are you doing? Tap you of the morning. Oh, yeah. Tap of the morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, well, you know, may Bridgerton bring you the pleasure it has brought us. Yes. May it make you feel sexy and beautiful and strong as a woman. And maybe you Google for hours all of the actors oh and gosh. actresses and enjoy a midnight horcasm. A what? <laughs> horcasm. Oh, I, uh, I thought hor- I got I my kids. Oh, why is that a dirty Big word? I've said it's F- not, I've- but I don't want to have to explain what it is. I've f bombed a thousand times. I don't want to have to explain what that is. You know and what? I don't want my yes, you will. You're going to uh, just a couple years from now, you're going to tell them and you're going to say oh, it's no. called an orgasm and both the boy and the girl should have one. You know what, Jen? I just you literally just killed it. You just, all my bony bone bone went away. Okay. Casey's I got more where that came from. She's so grossed out. She's like, Ugh, You want to talk about how to boners. get Sharpie stains on his stuff? Because I can. Don't even get me going, man. What's gross you about know, that? I'm, I'm, well, I, well, I'm so gross. No, you I just am not ready to. I'm not that. Like, listen, I'll send them to you and you can have a conversation with them and I'll just be weird for like eight days after. <laughs> <laughs> Mom. I don't know what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> See, it starts with me. I got to be more open so that, like, I can I can talk to my kid. It doesn't matter. I'm not ready about that yet. Okay, let's go to the mom box. Jen. All right. I've got a funny one. I've got a very funny one. Okay. Okay. okay so first of all, you have to see there's a there's a picture component. There is a note from a daughter, Ooh. and it says, "Dear mommy." <laughs> it's big swoopy letters. She's clearly like maybe second grade. I can recognize. And she says, oh, my God. She says, dear mommy, I I wish you cared about me more than your meeting. I hate that. And then she drew like an ugly, mean, like pumpkin face. And the mom said, I had to share this with you guys. Working from home during a pandemic kind of problems. Damn, I wish schools were safe. And she could be with her peers, learning and socializing instead of feeling ignored by me trying to work from home. Oh, my gosh. That guilt got to her. Noticed, <laughs> my, my kids have broken into a Bridgerton session like eight times during this podcast. So I feel you, lady. Oh I feel God, you. We're all feeling that so big time. Oh, my God. I can't. I, my poor. Like, and it's just like for us, especially because we're in California, we've been really locked down and like it's i don't know where she is but god bless her and we're here for you oh did i say her name it's melissa Melissa from instagram but she god bless you we hear you we feel you um i've my daughter's doing an like an online improv class and i go who do you do scenes with like how does that work and she goes we do a lot of tableaus (laughs) tableaus oh my goodness she i go by yourself she goes yeah i go well What's a tableau by yourself? And she's like, this one. This, I'm excited. That's Jen's uh, Friday night for many yeah. years. Uh, uh, <laughs> tableau by yourself. Yeah, tableau by yourself. And I'm like, God, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Well, Scene work alone. What? I know. It's, it's. But we're getting there, you guys. We should have a Bridgerton party. <gasps> you just said it and I thought it. Shouldn't yes. we? We absolutely yes. should. Like, get crazy yes. hairdos, crazy oh. dresses. My life just got made. I'm going to go plan it. That is the greatest idea. I'm going to make my husband wear one of those poet shirts and ride a horse. And I know. My husband loves wearing a kilt. I'm into it. (laughs) The Scottish rogue. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, the Scottish rogue. (laughs) What did you say? He was seducing like a salesperson or what? No, he was a a shipping heir or something like that. Uh, Hey, man, there's a reason why on my mom's bookshelf... There was like two that were actual books and the rest were like Daniel Steele and yes and uh, Harlequin romances and like you'd re- you'd see her reading and she seemed like invested and then like chapter six she's like leaning in and reading really fast. I'm like, whoa, what happened in your book? My Nothing? whole nightstand is all uh, self-help yes. and softcore porn. It's like I'm thank you uh, helping myself to some porn is what thank I'm doing. Thank you. Same. I'm, I've got a lot of Grisham and then I've got Daniel Steele and then I've got more <laughs> Grisham and Patterson and more Daniel Steele. You know where I don't, I don't want to, then I put books on the shelf that I'm like, I just want people to think I actually read it. <laughs> my graduate school books. I'm like, What's up, Kate Chopin? It's, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. I did read it. I had to read it. It was good, but not as good as Bridgerton, Bridgerton. or Julia Quinn. 
Um, I, Jenny, I, I think we're. I think, I think we're, we're done. At the end. All right, watch Bridgerton, you guys. Message us about it because it's yes. Message us all your Bridgerton thoughts. You can even leave us a voicemail. Now I don't know the number, yeah. but we'll post it. Yeah, give us give screen. us ideas for our fan fiction. Just kidding. Give us. We're not oh kidding. My God. We're not kidding. Not kidding. <laughs> Oh my God, better yet, write us into an episode of Bridgerton. Thank you. (laughs) Bye. Bye.